named Kiko Bonovo. They used to make Bonovo Turkish taffy. And it was very big on oh, Bonovo. B-O-M-O-M-O. Bonovo. Yeah, right. And he got quite wealthy selling Bonovo's Turkish taffy. He eventually sold to some candy company or other. And that was the end of Bonovo. But he approached me. Uh, somehow he reached me through an agent or what I, I don't know. And he wanted to open a series of um, magic restaurants in Washington, D.C. Magic restaurants? Yes. Called Foodinis. Foodinis. <laughs> <laughs> don't look at me, it's his idea. <laughs> and uh, I thought, okay, the name may have to go, but let's see what we can do. He hired me to um, hire the magicians. And uh, they had to do table work, of course, and uh, I had to train them very carefully to do only five to six minutes at each table and then go, because they had to move tables. And the rest turn them and there. turn them. Yeah, they you know, <laughs> don't want them sitting around forever talking about the magic trick. And so I heard, oh, uh, uh, I've locked on his name now, um, oh, it'll, it'll come back. I hired a number of them, including uh, the, the man who eventually became Alan Nguyen. Really? Yes, uh, Alan. He's Elaine New. Right. Yeah. Right. And he was a he was a good table worker. He was really a good table worker. He was my favorite of all the magicians. A good mentor. <laughs> yes. Oh yes. Hell yes. That, that's where he really ended up specializing. But he was doing just table work at the time. And um, I trained these guys. We had uh, all the, the chairs in the restaurant, the director's chairs, the canvas back, and they had names like Mandrake, Blackstone, Houdini, <laughs> Randy, and a few things like that. And, and you sat in the Randy chair or whatever. And uh, the, 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 the series of restaurants, it became a famous series of restaurants, actually four at one time. So uh, Houdini did open. Houdini, oh yeah. Houdini. Houdini. Oh, yeah. Very, very highly successful as Houdini and got wonderful write-ups from all the Gourmet magazines and such, and I, I got to know the operation pretty well. We had a problem, we had a stage show, uh, and that could only last uh, seven minutes, up to the top. Seven minutes. And, and you couldn't do anything in seven minutes. <coughs> Hello, goodbye. Uh, Bobby Bernard. <laughs> Bobby Bernard? No, not <coughs> Bernard. Bobby... Um, Reynolds. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Uh, he's, he's in the, uh, the New York uh, circuit. Uh, uh, anyway, I uh, hired him to do it, but Bobby couldn't do seven minutes. He had to do 40 minutes. And we had to drag him off stage. We had to close the curtain on him because he wouldn't stop. Because as soon as he got a laugh, that, that would lead to you know, the hand. And, he, and he, he got addicted to it. He got an adrenaline rush or whatever, uh, uh, Fudini rush, I don't know. But. Uh, Shortly after that, uh, after, well, the restaurant closed down because the whole chain closed down because he extended himself too far. He opened two more right after New Year's, the worst time in the world in history to open a, a restaurant, and the whole thing went broke. And it's a great pity. Uh, I got a few of the props out of it. And Do they have posters and stuff? Like oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, some good stuff like that. Anyway, uh, that was, that was a, a sad thing for it to happen because it was very highly successful. And the magicians, of course, loved the idea. They had uh, eggs houdini and things like <laughs> All the food was named after the magicians. Pot roast best. Yeah, something. <laughs> very appropriate. I'm <laughs> glad you thought of that. <laughs> not not, uh, 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 not pork wine at best. No. <laughs> Anyway, um, so then then Tito called me one day and he said, um, "Brisket fast." He said, "We're going to re renew the Magic Clown." Now the Magic Clown was a series that was on television at four o'clock, four fifteen, I think, every afternoon, just a fifteen-minute show in black and white, very early days of television, and uh, Dick, somebody, and I can't think of that name either. Zero. No, no, no. it was well known in Magic. Uh, used to do them, but it was in heavy disguise. You couldn't tell who it was. Really. So they could use a different machine every week. It didn't make the same, same makeup. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And uh, so that was very highly successful. Only a 15-minute show, but it was for Bonomo's uh, Turkish Taffy. So this is all connected. Then he wanted to renew the series, 
and he was going to sell it. He wasn't going to be selling Baltimore's turkey taffy any longer, but because uh, he sold that company, so he wanted to renew the uh, series, and he asked me to do a pilot for it. Now the, the purpose of it was very clever, because there's always an Uncle Don or a, a Mr. Bob or somebody, and every local town all over America at that time had a little show going, a little kids show, on a Saturday afternoon or a Thursday afternoon, whatever. And uh, <coughs> they needed to drop something in that was magical, but uh, something different, you see. And the scheme was to have Uncle Bob turn and say, now, boys and girls, it's time for us to visit, yes, you guess it, the magic town. And the camera would wipe like this, and it would wipe right into the videotape that they had bought from us, you see, of the Magic Cloud, saying, hi, boys and girls, I'm the Magic Cloud. And he'd do something that lasted, <laughs> oh, three or four minutes or whatever, and then back to the studio. And the camera would wipe again, and that would match the wiping of the other camera, and uh, it looked like they had just gone to a different part of the studio to show this. It was a good commercial idea, mm -hmm. and we thought we could sell this to all the different stations around the country, I don't know what happened with it because I wasn't connected with a commercial or anything, but I did the pilot. But I had to shave off the beard. That's and why I, said, I didn't recognize you. That's why I didn't recognize you on yeah, the beard either. Yeah, nobody would recognize me, no. Only from my voice you might recognize me. Anyway, it's on some place on YouTube, I'm told. Tell too. about, tell about the fake I, beard. <coughs> what's that? You had to have a fake beard. Yes, I'm getting to it. You <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Hold up. i got to work up the drama. Okay, this is show business. And so anyway, we I went out and I, I shaved off the beard. Oh God, that was awful. Shave off the beard. Yeah, this keeps me warm. It was during the middle of the winter that they paid me a whole lot of money to do it. Believe me. And as as somebody at the table just mentioned, yes, they actually he got me engineered a fake beard that I could put on because I had a couple of dates I had to do. <laughs> and I actually glued the damn thing on my chin until I regrew the other one. And it grows at quite a rate, I can assure you. It comes down to here if I'm not careful. Every now and then. Anyway, uh, yes, we, we did the Magic Cloud series and um, we did, uh, I think, six episodes or something like that. Just a sample so we could send out. And it did get sold in Detroit and Rhodesia. So I'm very big in Rhodesia. I think you probably still, still aren't in Rhodesia. Can you imagine in Detroit and Rhodesia, the only two markets it sold in? So it naturally it tanked. Now what do those two markets have in common? I remember the director of Ted Cox, long since deceased. But it was sort of fun doing, but I, I went up to Toronto to do it. I didn't want it to be done in any studio in New York or someone who was seen me doing it. And uh, my name didn't appear on the screen at all. I made sure that I didn't get any credit. Did they give you a fake nom de plume? Uh, I forgot. He's I the forgot. magic clown. Yeah, exactly. He's the clown. Randy the magic clown. No, no, not Randy the magic clown. The magic I was almost the magic clown. Let's put it that way. But uh, they paid me very handsomely to do it. I have no complaints about that. I don't know what happened in Turkey. Uh, in Turkey. <laughs> Turkish <laughs> Turkey <laughs> I once had a job. I must have seen it. I don't know. <laughs> I had to wear it.